When you think about all these new people, even in the last six months that registered to vote, it's all young people. And last I checked, young people, they don't even take calls from their mothers. I can't imagine they take calls from pollsters. <laughs> that is so damn true. So damn true. We have been talking about it for weeks. And Tuesday, the results proved us right. Polls failed to factor in young people. And they turned out in record numbers, voting nearly two to one in favor of Democrats. These voters are among the most diverse ever and they are not buying the culture war controversies the Republicans are trying to sell. With every passing day, an old white man longing for an America of yesteryear dies, and a bunch of young, diverse people are turning 18, and they are sick of school shootings. They want to have sex and not get pregnant, and they damn well know there's not a transgender basketball team plotting to win the big game. So let's find out more and bring in... Three people that know all about this. John Delavolpe, director of polling at Harvard Kennedy School. Victor Xi, co-host of the iGen Politics podcast. He was also the youngest elected delegate for Joe Biden in 2020. And my friend Juanita Tolliver, a veteran political strategist to progressive candidates and causes. John, you know I'm going to you first. You are the man who studies these voters most. What do you think? Um, well, I think... What happened is exactly what we said was going to happen on your show a week or so ago, Stephanie. If not for young people, we have a starkly different result. We saw not a red wave. We didn't see a blue wave, but we certainly saw a young voter Gen Z wave. Let me break it down really, really simple. OK, if you look at Do voters it. over the age of 45, they supported Republicans by 10 percentage points. Well, more than half of the electorate is over the age of 45, closer to 60 percent. It is the 13-point the margin among voters under 35. It is the 28-point margin among Gen Z and young millennials that turn red states into blue. And we have a different country because of Victor and thousands and thousands of young organizers around the country. Juanita, what do you think? I think they showed up and showed out at historic rates. And I also appreciate the demographic breakdown that you put on earlier with 89% of black youth voters supporting Democrats, 68% of Latino voters supporting Democrats. If nothing screams court Gen Z, court youth voter loud as this, I don't know what, this, what other bat signal we could send Democrats because in addition to the praise that we're hearing from the president and from Democratic leaders, they also needed to need to be courted with substantive investments in legislation, whether that's related to climate change, abortion rights, LGBTQ rights, more student loan debt relief. All of that needs to continue happening because if nothing else, Democrats have to sustain this attraction with Gen Z voters and youth voters in order to have a continued impact in policies going forward. Well, none of that is on the Republican platform. So, Victor, Republicans are waking up and saying, gee, we got to reach out to those young people, but reach out with what offering? You're so right, Stephanie. I mean, one of the things that you're seeing from Republicans right now is they're basically freaking out over the fact that young people overwhelmingly voted for Democrats. And so right now you're seeing a bunch of Republicans on the air basically trying to win over young people. But here's the thing. I think that Republicans just don't have anything to offer. And young people see this specifically. You know, every single time that a Republican casts their votes, it seems to be against the interests of uh, young people. We saw this with the Inflation Reduction Act. One of the biggest things that uh, young people care about is climate change. The Inflation Reduction Act was something that had a historic investment in climate change. Every single Republican voted against that bill. You also have gun reforms uh, legislation. Every single Republican voted against that bill. And you also have Republicans doing everything that they are doing to really denigrate the lives of young people with uh, overturning uh, abortion, enacting more uh, strict uh, voter suppression laws. And so all of these things, really, just like you said, makes it clear to young people that Republicans have nothing to offer. And so all we can do right now is turn to Democrats as our next solution. I think that's what you're seeing a lot of the data right now coming out of the states and early ballots and mail-in ballots and some of the exit polling uh, showing. John, they're not just offering young people anything, they're turning them off. Every night they're appealing to older white males in this country and preying on their fear. Given that, where do Republicans go? You, you, you could get your base totally fired up, but if your base is small and only shrinking, it doesn't get you anything. Stephanie, the, the, their base is a small melting iceberg, melting every single day. As you said at Allow the open, at, 
every single every single every single day an older conservative is passing away replaced by several well-educated thoughtful diverse young americans and worse not only are they turning them off but they're mocking them they're mm -hmm. punching down they are using the most vulnerable citizens among us to try for cheap rating points they're not doing damage, I think, to their party, but they're trying to do damage to this generation. And thank goodness this generation is fighting and we're seeing the, re the results of this. John, John Fetterman won 70 percent of the under 30 vote. He's not senator without, without young people. Same thing in New Hampshire, same thing in Arizona. Juanita, Republicans had another idea for how they can expand their base. I want to share what one Fox News Fox News host is suggesting. Please oh watch God! This. <laughs> Single women are breaking for Democrats by thirty points, and this makes sense when you think about how Democrat policies are designed to keep women single. But once women get married, they vote Republican. Married women, married men, go for Republicans by double digits. But single women and voters under forty have been captured by Democrats. So we need these ladies to get married. And it's time to fall in love and just settle down. Guys, go put a ring on it. Just put a ring on it. I'm pretty sure you Beyonce You cannot make up this stupidity. <laughs> you cannot make this up, Steph. And it's not, it's not just chauvinistic. It's just plain ignorant. Like, you think that's the pitch that's going to get young, independent women on your side? Like, and, and what kills me is that Republicans are so anti-woman. His response is, get a man in your life to control them. That's the rebuttal here. That's the response here. It's just disgusting. I, I, I expect nothing better from those folks over at that other network. And, and honestly, it just reaffirms how much they are anti-women, how much they hate women. And that fear of women who are independent, that fear of young people, that's only going to continue to grow because you're not getting anybody on your side with this argument. So shout out to the independent women. Shout out to the young people who are rejecting this disgusting argument from the right. Uh, you know who doesn't fear women? The state of Michigan, Victor. Tell us about that state, who won and who turned out for them. So Michigan is one of those states that I paid a lot of attention to, because just like the other states that you're seeing, like Pennsylvania and other states around the country, uh, you're, Michigan is a state that has a trifecta, basically. So um, the the governorship, the state legislature, all branches of government are controlled by Democrats. And that's what you saw on Tuesday night. Young people voted overwhelmingly for Democrats. And there really is no path to, there was no path to victory without uh, young people turning out in Michigan. Uh, one of the things that I was doing uh, throughout the day on Tuesday was texting some of my friends in Michigan. And some of the videos that I was able to see from my friends was just stunning to me. I mean, it's sad that young people have to vote in such long lines, but some of the lines that young people had to vote in were up to five hours long, and they stayed in line. Wow. They made sure that their voice was heard, and that, to me, was so inspiring. I was really a little bit overcome with emotion because all of these young people know the stakes of this election, and I think part of the reason is because you saw Proposition 3 on the ballot. That was uh, an amendment to make sure that abortion is enshrined in the Constitution, which means that young people turned out to vote young women, especially, uh, uh, especially women as well. They turned out to vote in historic numbers, and I think uh, that's what it really allowed allowed someone like Gretchen Whitmer, something like Proposition 3, to pass. It was those videos that you posted, Victor, why I wanted you to join us tonight. When I saw you post them on Twitter, I was amazed and I was guilty when I thought back to what I was doing when I was 18, 19, 20, and 21, and I wasn't waiting on lines like that. That is inspirational. Those right there are patriots. John Delavolpe, Victor Shee, Juanita Tolliver, great, great, great to see you all.